Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna run through how to build out the abandoned cart flow on Klaviyo. Now, it's one of the highest revenue producing flows that we build out for our clients. And honestly, most brands and even most agencies don't really build this flow out very well. Beyond that, most of the videos I've seen on this flow don't really dive into a great amount of detail, but it's one of the most important flows. So in this video, I'm gonna run through four different things. Number one is what it is and a few pitfalls. Two is our strategy with the abandoned cart flow. Three is how to build out the flow and then four is two things that i can almost guarantee you don't have in the flow right now so first things first the abandoned cart flow on clavio is really the abandoned checkout flow so for some reason they call abandoned cart abandoned cart but they also call abandoned checkout abandoned cart i honestly i don't know why and it literally makes no sense but i digress we're going to cover the abandoned cart aka abandoned checkout flow in this video now before i dive into our strategy and the exact flow structure that we use that generates our clients tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars per month, there's a few pitfalls that we see a ton of brands fall into. First is that they don't wanna bother people with too many emails. The reality is most brands have an abandoned cart series that is just way too short. Oftentimes they only have one or two or maybe three emails. We recommend our clients to have four to six emails in the abandoned checkout series. And typically we start with three to four and then we build from there some even have more and yes if you're saying the exact same thing three to six different ways three to six different times it's too much but what you want to do with the abandoned car flow is speak to people at the right time with the right message what most brands do with their abandoned checkout series is something like this hey did you forget this hey did you forget something your cart is disappearing want 10 percent off do you want 15 percent off this is super ineffective and honestly it's just annoying what what you want to do is set up a flow that addresses different objections that people have and they may be experiencing after adding to cart. The people who have abandoned cart clearly have intent. They know what they want and they know they want it. So one of the main reasons that people bounce isn't because they don't like the product. And remember, these are people who hit the checkout page. It usually boils down to one of these three things, price, shipping, trust, and a fourth one is they got distracted. So if any one of these things don't align, they won't purchase. So what we want to do is do our best to handle their objections in each email. Before you dive in and start building it out, you're going to need four key things. Number one is the dynamic return to checkout button. Number two is the dynamic image code. Number three is a dynamic text code. And number four is the dynamic code or offer code. Now, don't worry, a lot of this is already done for you within Klaviyo. So let me dive in, I'll share my screen and I'll show you exactly how we build these out for our clients. Okay guys, so let's build out the abandoned cart flow now. The key thing you wanna look for here is just don't make this harder than it needs to be. Uh, so what you wanna do is dive in and go into your Klaviyo dashboard, go into flows, browse ideas, and then just search for cart. You'll see there's gonna be a number that show up here. You'll see like recharge, etc. right? Now you don't wanna select this one. This is the added to cart trigger. This is what I mentioned before. It's saying added to cart, not the abandoned checkout. So this one, see they call this one abandoned cart reminder. So I'll show you what this looks like. And same with this one, amended cart reminder. So this one, you'll see the trigger is checkout started, right? I'm going to just keep this name the same. And then I'm going to click create flow. Now, this is just a dummy account. So it's giving me a couple of these error messages right now. So once it creates that flow, you'll see the trigger here is checkout started. And then it's actually automatically going to add these flow filters in. So placed order zero times and has not been in the flow in the last seven days. Now, I'm just going to switch my screen to show you one that's currently live because that's just kind of how you create it. So for our client here, this is the filter that we have. So we have a play store zero times since starting this flow and has not been in this flow in the last 30 days. We don't want them to be in this flow multiple times in a month because it loses its effectiveness. So what we do want is a, if they haven't been in for 30 days, let's get them back in the flow. So the first thing we do, we actually typically do a four way split test of send times and time delays, right? So here you can see there's a two way split test. The reason we have a two way versus a four way is just they didn't have a ton of traffic. So we don't want to kind of like overextend the split test. We want to start here with like two quite different send times or, or uh, delays, I should say. And then we want to test further once we determine, hey, which one's better? One hour or four hours? One hour is better. Okay, let's test one hour versus 30 minutes and, you know, closer intervals. Typically, we'll do a 30 minute, a one hour, a two hour, 
and a four hour. So that's kind of what we look at. And then all we do is we build it out once and then we just duplicate it over. So you don't have to like redo everything. It's annoying. And then you do a conditional split here. So this one, uh, we've actually found a winner already and it's wait one hour. So how you build this, and you can see on the right hand side here, this conditional split here, I'm just gonna move this slightly. There we go. So what you can see here is it's set up for a random sample of 100% now. So we just opted to not delete this whole section because it deletes the data. Instead, we said, you know what, we'll just leave it. And now instead of 50% going this way and 50% going this way, which would be, you know, back to here, right? Instead of doing that, now we just want 100% going to the yes call, right? So pretty straightforward there. So once we built out those, again, four different kind of time intervals, time delays that we're doing, then you would build out, or actually, sorry, before you do that, you would build out the, the flow and then you would copy it over. So, okay, so the first email here is one of the most important, if not the most important in the abandoned checkout flow. So this one is really just a reminder, right? It's a reminder and, it, and we might sprinkle in some reviews here as well. But typically what we're going to do is have that initial time delay. And then we're just going to say something like, hey, did you forget this? It's okay if you do that once. And where it goes wrong is if you do that 17 times in a row, right? It's no good. No bueno. Once we've sent that initial email, we'll have a one day delay and then we'll send the second one. And this is just, you know, a, a little bit of an update as well. How we kind of change the messaging here is we talk a little bit more about our USPs and try to handle objections that they might have, whether it's, you know, if we don't have free shipping, shipping, right? If we have other objections that they might run into, those four objections. So again, reminder, but then also let's talk about our USPs. Let's talk about what we stand for. Uh, let's talk about what you get and like the key benefits of the product, not the features, the benefits. And you can have a lot of fun with this because you can actually break it out per product as well or per category and that's where it starts to become really powerful too right if you have you know dresses pants and socks you know what's going to be applicable for dresses is probably not applicable to socks so if you can create separate flows for each one of those it's going to work way better so after you've had that first reminder you've had the second kind of objection handling email where you talk a little bit about the usp some of the benefits you sprinkle in some reviews there that's a big one as well what we like to do there too is sprinkle in our usps in the form of reviews. Very impactful because it's, it's coming from someone else. We'll then wait a day again. So we'll have another time delay for a day and then we'll have our third email. So the third email is a little bit heavier on the reviews. Typically what we're doing there is UGC reviews. In that second email, it might be a little bit lighter and we might sprinkle them in a little bit more. But here we're really trying to go like UGC. Sometimes it'll be standard reviews, but again, how can we handle their objections? That's the main thing we're trying to keep in mind here. Now, once you've built out those three, this is the key piece. And this is actually what most brands don't do. They usually leave it at one or two or maybe three. This is a really impactful thing that you can do to add another couple thousand dollars every month to your revenue. And that's just adding a conditional split towards the end and say, hey, you know, if someone has purchased zero times, let's keep this going a little bit longer, right? And then if they have not, so this would be someone has purchased, I don't know why this is, uh, looks like it's just lagging or something right now. So, so what it should look like like is person has placed order and then it says zero times overall time. And then if yes, then they're entered into this next step and then they then receive two more emails. And if no, they are out of the flow, right? If someone's purchased before, they get it. If someone has not purchased before, so we wait two days and then we have an incentive. It doesn't need to be discount. In this case, this client wants to do a discount. So we did a 15% off discount here. And basically we're just saying like, hey, you know what? Like this is kind of a, a last shot to get you through the door here. This works quite well. We had a 3.1% place order order rate on this. And this is just in the last seven days. So it's pretty powerful and this can work really well. And then what we do sometimes is we're kind of in the midst of building this out for them. So we start with this and then depending on how well these four go, then we may build out a fifth one and a sixth one as well. So try to create a little bit more urgency. The fifth one usually is where we're trying to create more urgency there. We're saying like, hey, last chance, you got 24 hours to purchase, take you this while you can. And then the code expires and then actually have the code expire. This is huge. So that's pretty much how you build out the abandoned card flow. Now, again, the main things you want to think about here and the main things you want to focus on is the actual objections that they have. So for every brand, this is going to be different. If it's a product or a supplement, it may be, does this actually work for me? If it's clothing, is this going to fit? And what happens if I need to return it? You need to think about, or, you know, furniture, is this going to fit? Like, what's the situation if I buy this and I don't like it? All of that is really, really important. And this is where you should be handling that. These are the people who know they want to buy. They know what they want to buy. And 
you just need to get them across the line and say like, hey, here, listen, this is what happens if this happens. Don't worry, we got you. This is where you need to kind of like show up for your clients, show up for your customers and show them, hey, we care. Hopefully that helps. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But this is one of the most important flows you can set up for your brand. I and mean, if you do have an e-com brand, you don't want to do this all yourself. We will do this for you. If you qualify, you can apply to work with us below. So we think this is a good fit. If you think this is a good fit, we can help you build this out well. So thanks so much for watching and take it easy.